Good evening. Now we are going to have a talk about Debian Web Service Development with Frank Lichtenstein. Frank? Lichtenheld. <laughs> Lichtenheld. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So this is uh, ended as above. So obviously uh, I will not talk the whole uh, hour. Um, in spring, my plan was to actually have something to show you at this time. Uh, we live intervened, and uh, I have not. So uh, today, I can only present you some some ideas what we maybe should work on, and what might be worthwhile goals and encourage you to come to me and work with me uh, or present me your ideas or work alone and uh, make it better than me and actually produce something. So I have neither a code uh, and only a little plan and with some of the stuff I will talk about I have not really much experience so I would like to uh, yeah come to me and share your experience with me so that we can together create something cool for the Debian project. Um, so one thing I want to talk about is the fact that we have many, many uh, websites and uh, many, many services and there's a whole lot of ways to interact with them and uh, not all of them are obvious. Uh, some of them are very mysterious, uh, not, not good documented, and uh, they almost all does, do not share any information about uh, yourself. Um, for some people, that might be a good thing. So uh, if you don't, do not want to share your information with these uh, websites, that's perfectly fine. And we should not discourage that. But <coughs> I myself would some uh, times prefer I could just uh, set, uh, give some preferences to one of these sites and have the others uh, have the for the others uh, uh, some way to learn about that. Um, as I said in my uh, talk description uh, in the schedule, uh, it's not my plan to adopt Launchpad for Debian or something like that. Uh, I mean, Debian doesn't work that way, and uh, we have a historically grown uh, farm of services and websites, and that's uh, certainly something uh, we do not have to uh, abandon. But uh, some, uh, some things uh, are currently uh, guessed um, often and stuff like that that could be uh, could be set by the user instead, and uh, so to have reliable information. For example, the mapping of uh, which developer, uh, which keys belong, to, uh, GPG keys belong to which developer, which email, different email addresses belong to the same developer, uh, stuff like that. Um, and um, we have uh, also some things that. Uh, rely on only half automated tasks or some something like that L like for the website we have some of these things that could benefit from a central place where uh, users and inter uh, interested parties could insert that information um, so obviously we have uh, in Debian I will uh, explain some of these things because they are written very short. So obviously we have our LDAPs accounts as Debian developers um, and obviously that they contain some information that is private and that should not be exposed uh, over any web page and has not be too accessible over any web page um, and it has the problem uh, that uh, it's for DDs strictly only. So uh, there is no way and probably there might be no good way at the moment to include uh, users and DMs and stuff like that there. Um, and you have the mail and the web interface to change these values. Um, the, 
DDPO is one of the examples where, where I have uh, really would like to tell uh, the site more about me at some point um, and which supports something like that over the mail interface or um, via the cookie setting but this uh, um, for the for the cookies setting it obviously works only on one machine and uh, I have to set it again if I change the browser or something and for the mail setting I, I th uh, that's not uh, at the moment I think uh, authenticated anyway or stuff like that so yeah so then for the wiki I have uh, a separate account that uh, again and then uh, for IT most for the uh, for the um, request tracking system uh, for the admins and stuff uh, most of us don't have an account uh, but you um, if you have one s uh, separate account again and then for alias yet another account and uh, even though some of the group stuff <coughs> I think uh, was or is uh, still synced with uh, the LDAP dat database but only in one direction um, and then you have your uh, subscription to the lists but okay and uh, then you have the BTS where we in the BTS buff, uh, offered some people requested some features which would require something like authentication to the BTS, something like an account, uh, like a login. Uh, but at the moment it hasn't, so um, at the moment it doesn't need to. Um, right. So I think that should be clear. So um, one of the ideas I wanted to present here and I will spend most of my time on doing that um, is that it would be nice um, if we could have something like a common identity that uh, gives, gives us the possibility to tell all the different uh, websites who we are um, and uh, even maybe but that uh, has not be to uh, be the first um, step to may, uh, um, store preferences uh, in some kind of database, wherever that might be. That depends on the technical solution for the problem. But uh, and to um, yeah, so that other sites can ask about that uh, if if we uh, um, order them to. So, for example. All the email addresses I use, uh, all of them are mine, and uh, I should. Uh, and I'm interested in all of them. And uh, it would be nice if, for example, the BTS know, would know that, because uh, uh, the BTS is probably <coughs> one of the cases where m most people have, due to some circumstances, use different email addresses. But some people use even different email addresses for their packages. Um, key IDs, uh, packages I'm interested in for whatever reason, um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, or for example, am I a user, do I need much help, am I a developer and I want to be the display to be concise and very uh, much information and little explanation, uh, stuff like that. Um, I would find that nice. So uh, one ide idea one could have to implement that would be uh, OpenID or some similar protocol uh, for HTTP. There are some uh, smaller implementations uh, like the stuff, uh, the CIPA, uh, CIPA, the uh, request checker for CPAN uses this BitCard account, but they now support OpenID too. So um, one idea would uh, could be to encourage, to first encourage uh, Debian web services to uh, support OpenID uh, logins, and uh, secondly to uh, help that effort by setting up an OpenID provider for Debian users that don't have one otherwise, um, so that uh, we could 
uh, easily um, support some of uh, the more advanced stuff which might not be supported by all providers and which also could mitigate one uh, some of the disadvantages of OpenID, for example, that it, uh, in, se in itself it provides no trust because you can normally use any provider. Um, and so that would be a provider we could trust more, for example, because you could authenticate by a GPT key or something like that. Um, so um, OpenID, the basic way it works is that you authenticate uh, to uh, your OpenID provider, which can be yourself, which can be uh, a company that offers that, uh, and which then tells uh, the server, uh, the, the web service, uh, the web application in uh, question that it has authenticated you, and you can then uh, map this OpenID login to some account. Um, and in the newer versions of the protocol, there are even some nice ways to exchange uh, preferences so that you could at some, uh, uh, for example, at some central place in your op uh, own provider, um, create a list of uh, packages you're interested in and the uh, services could um, ask for them and even provide a push um, update facility. Um, the problem with uh, OpenID is that, it, to my knowledge, uh, at least works only for HTTP-based services because it was developed for them. So no luck for your uh, SSH login for or for your um, for other stuff. Um, right, and of course uh, you have to take care of uh, actually encrypting the. Um, lock in and stuff like that yourself. Um, so another way would be to use a more low level approach, a more a general approach like for example uh, Kerberos uh, or something uh, but that requires a lot of setup uh, which would, uh, would have to be done mostly by DSA so it's not a lightweight solution, and uh, I would think we would have something like that if it would be uh, in the interest of DSA. Um, I mean, it's uh, um, it's not an unobvious solution. Um, uh, uh, the other problem is it's not where we will integrate it in most end-user programs and stuff like that. I think for for most browsers, you need a plugin, or it's not supported. Um, but as I said at the beginning, I don't have really much experience. So if I talk completely bullshit, please tell me. Um, so and uh, one of the uh, niceties of OpenID is that everyone can provide their own provider, so nobody um, has to rely on some someone else um, for their authentication. Um, Okay, uh, so that would be uh, one thing we could uh, discuss, um, but if you have something else you want to uh, talk about in terms of what could we do so that mm, all these websites that we have, all these services that we have, don't uh, are so, uh, yeah, uh, nebulous, uh, yeah, at the moment, they don't look alike. They don't. Uh, they you don't use them alike mostly, and uh, yeah, you have basically have to know them, to uh, so you can find them. And it's not a very yeah integrated approach. Ideas will be, would be welcome. So most of the service you mentioned actually have uh, content which is fully public and mm. not really user specific. So yeah. just to understand your idea, you're thinking about using uh, this kind of authentication to save preferences basically, like filters and this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, um, I think uh, as you said, uh, many of these services uh, currently do not have any login. But uh, I mean, um, 
it would be nice for the services that have login to support something that would work with the solution. So for example, alias could start, uh, someone could look into how much work it would be to, for alias, for example, to support OpenID logins. Um, and it, I think some of the services we, uh, that at the moment don't support any kind of login could profit from it. But, um, and I think if we, uh, if we agree on a solution beforehand, we can it m make less work for everyone involved. Uh, so for example, if we want to add it to the BTS, the PTS, and a package Debian org, uh, if we work together as the maintainers of these services, we can make it less work for any of us. But of course you have to be interested <laughs> in it uh, at all, so. Had you thought about using an LDAP database for storing that? Because that's what LDAP is about. I mean, not our LDAP database for the right. developers, yeah. but uh, an LDAP database is exactly, and it supports more than the regular protocols for the ones that you need PAM, you can use PAM, and for web services, most of the languages have plugins for that, so it will, even you can publish part of the tree as public. I mean, so if your preference could be queried by the applications without any login, and that could work. Yeah, right. Um, so uh, what you what you would pr propose is uh, to set up a separate LDAP database um, as the source, and then uh, how do I say to the service which user I am? Um, so no, you still need an account on that on that no. LDAP database. But I mean, for uh, DDPO, for mm. instance, we can tell DDPO to query. Uh, <coughs> the login, I mean, for this example, but you, you can say, oh, query fall or s your account and get the other email address and make it all together. And then we can just keep adjusting the, the fields or the object classes inside the LDAP database to provide information. Mm -hmm. For other things like probably BTS, it will need something different, like it needs to have an, a login page because for the for the DTPO, I think it's easier because we, we already know the mails is just a matter of having something that connect them and then mm -hmm. queries the LDAP database would be easier. But for the other things that needs to store the preferences, then probably it needs some login and then it too needs to query the database. Uh, probably you to add, add some load to the SEA if you're going to have it as an official service, but it could be started as some web services.debian.net or something that we can like try a few things and see if it works. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, the um, the advantage of uh, op something like OpenID would be that it would be even more decentralized. So you could provide an OpenID provider, but nobody has to use it if if they want don't want to. But yeah, it's of course a nice idea too. So uh, yeah. Um, basically, I think it amounts somewhat to someone starting to do something. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it the problem with all this uh, stuff is, uh, I mean, it's not the first talk I hold in that direction. And at the moment, there seem to be very few people in Debian who work on that, and those who work uh, on their websites, on, on their services, are often very busy with just maintaining them. I mean, uh, the uh, BTS has, has ma made, for example, great progress in the last years, and packages has uh, seen quite some changes, and the PTS <coughs> has seen quite some changes, but uh, there seems to be always not enough uh, motivation and time left to do something uh, which could benefit uh, all of us. So do we have uh, an appropriate forum or a place where we can discuss this kind of stuff besides um, the single main of the <laughs> people involved, <laughs> which uh, are not a good idea? Yeah, I mean, we could, for example, create an Irish project for that and uh, create a mailing list there and discuss it there because it's not really on topic on each of, of the single mailing lists like Debian QA and stuff like that. So, yeah, if enough people are interested in, we could definitely do that and use that 
or maybe just Debian website uh, mailing list. Um, if, yeah. if some people from there don't disagree with it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we could try that too, but... The point is the extra traffic, because yeah. I don't really care about www.debianorg, I mean. Yeah. Um, exactly, I, th I think the, the problem of the uh, Debian www mailing list is that it has, uh, yeah, quite a few types of traffic that are very different and yeah, I often find it difficult to follow it and ignore all this stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I certainly would prefer uh, an own forum for that, but uh, only if more than two people are interested in it. So. <laughs> okay, I mean, I can set up an alias project and I send it over the appropriate lists and everyone who's interested in can subscribe and we can talk about it more after DevConf. Uh, I, I would send it uh, to Debian QA, Debian www, and DebConf discuss probably, so, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Some other things that uh, could be uh, on topic there would be, for example, more, uh, yeah, machine-friendly interfaces to our web service, like uh, the BTS has this uh, SOAP, thingy, uh, which seems to be uh, now used quite often from different uh, groups and teams and stuff, and uh, something like that could certainly be uh, added to more of our websites. Uh, that would be something we could discuss that maybe too. So, <coughs> other... Actually, uh, the SOAP interface for the PTS is being developed, actually. Mm. It's I think that for most of the service can be added really simply, and I think that having a SOAP interface to all the various service can really help people in mixing data together because it will be just the same technology. Yeah. And maybe if we add a SOAP interface at some point for the UDD, then we have all the data we need. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, ha we had a quick talk about this topic. Um, I was, we all think, I think, I guess, um, that the websites of Debian are very heterogeneous, very different looking. Uh, as long as it's on Debian.net, I don't worry too much and it's no problem, but um, we probably all feel that Debian.org domains should be more similar looking. Uh, I'm really interested in getting the wiki Debian.org having something similar to Debian.org. Um, even though currently we all feel like it's not very nice looking. Um, so someone, I can't remember, just said we could just ping some graphic websites, uh, people interested in graphic websites and having a design. Um, I should ping this guy and yeah, we can work on having nicer design. So that's one part and... Yeah, but, um, the, the problem in the past, uh, as I feel it was often that uh, there were some design uh, proposals for the website, for example, uh, and stuff like that, and it often then, yeah, like faded away. I, I don't know exactly what the problem was, but uh, it seems that, uh, yeah, it was missing some Debian developer uh, really taking interest. It was, I, I think we have a problem in that uh, area to accept contributions and to uh, yeah, encourage contributions. So we say that we don't that we want a new design, but if someone turns up and has a new design, uh, we seem to fail to go through with that. Yeah, I, I've I've seen many proposals in the past coming mm. to the mailing list or other place or Debian uh, on the wiki. Mm. So it was a layout proposal thing. Yeah. And uh, I think if, if we call for people to have, to propose a new design, um, we really have to help or maybe just have the design and implement the design ourselves because I, I think in some ways just the place where it just got stuck. 
Uh, we had a design, um, and yeah, the guy couldn't implement it or just couldn't find the person to, to help implementing it. Yeah. I have, I don't know if you share the impression that it's really at the CSS, the time where the CSS had to be done that it stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, there was a layout, but it was hacked and not really usable in the form and had then to be <coughs> implemented really or what? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, with, with some of the proposals, there was really the problem that they were just tagged together images and mm. there was no really code behind it and someone would actually had to make the crude work to to ex to create uh, uh, the templates for that would make it look like these images <laughs> yeah okay good that uh, yeah okay i mean uh yeah we would prob uh, obviously need someone uh, that does css better than me for that, but yeah, right. Yes. Well, could we just have a design contest and then um, <coughs> that way we could just, you know, kind of have one theme that some people pick. I mean, I don't know how we would vote on it, but, uh, and then we could just apply that to all of the, all of the websites that need applying. I mean, that seems like the most efficient way to yeah. have a single design that everyone likes. Right. Um, and people, people get into those. I mean, they, they sort of like um, the recognition and stuff like that. And it's kind of fun for the, for the artists and designers to get together and work on stuff and feel like their contributions matter. And at least with the wiki, um, it's, it's pretty trivial to have multiple themes. So it's not like there would even necessarily be a loser. Mm. Um, you, could, you could integrate you know, the top five themes or something like that into the wiki that, people, that the users could use. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I think it generally only takes someone to organize it, to lead that effort. Um, I think we, we will really have to assist <laughs> the designer to implement it uh, because we have dozens, maybe dozens, but quite a few websites and the CSS will have to be re-implemented for each website, more or less. Yeah, right, but you can have one shared CSS that will cover most of the websites and the HTML should I mean, the HTML for the frame should probably mostly constant. And then if you have, have, have one website that really looks like it and is implemented in HTML and CSS and is not a generated image, then it's most, mostly trivial, uh, sh should be mostly trivial to apply that to the, the other sites and to do the, that because that's mostly mainly just grunt work then. But the, the, for me, at least, the difficult step is from, from the, from the photoshopped uh, GIMP image to, to the HTML pl plus CSS. And uh, I mean, obviously, we would need to make it, uh, the contest should be about the HTML and the CSS and not about some image, um, I think. Yeah, but y you really, you you do a CSS file once and you, you just have to put in the style informations or the style classes into the general workflow of the system you are using. Yeah, so I, you I really do the design only once. Yeah, but I think and he meant that uh, you have the existing format of each website and you would, uh, obviously yeah, there would be some you adaptions needed. have to put in the style uh, parts. Yeah, into right. But um, but one point uh, that I want to aim at Erin, um, it's, it's not the first time that a contest was proposed and it was never really opposed and it just didn't, it just didn't happen. Uh, a contest will definitely work and no one really objected to it so far. But uh, nobody it was several times proposed it. so far and no one really organized it in the end. Yeah, right. Uh, behind you. Uh, <coughs> will there be some sort of a, a reward for the for the competition? <laughs> huh? What was it?
Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, if we talk to the TPL, DPL, we could probably do, do something, uh, but I don't know. It would be probably up to the organizer of the contest to decide that and to talk to the DPL what's possible and what what's reasonable. I have no idea what's reasonable for something like that. Uh, if the recognition is enough or if you have to give some small price or I don't know. <laughs> that should be possible at least, yeah. The question is who should organize it? Should it be Debian WWW or the, I think do um, we have a publicity uh, team right now? Um, like I think uh, to say that a list should do something uh, never works. Uh, I think someone needs to step up, what? <laughs> step up and say uh, I will organize this uh, and I will talk with people uh, and I will make it happen and unless someone does this, yeah, I, and I think it's unimportant if that person is from th from the web team, from the, the publicity team, or from some other team, or not in some team at all. Uh, it would probably help if it's um, Debian developer, um, but yeah. And uh, it will be judged by 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 who? By some committee, or, or how will it, we work out the best? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, it was before my time. How was how was uh, voted on the logo? That was a GR, right? Uh, might be a bit overkill. Uh, maybe a simple, uh, a more simple web-based vote <coughs> would be enough. We can use Mako's. Mako has an election tool that we could use in theory. I think. But let's but let's not get too hung up on yeah. that. That's you know that yeah. that's if we get if we get so busy talking about how to do it, it will never get done. Yeah, right. So yeah, I think that's all valid questions that should be decided, but do not actually need to be decided here and now. So whoever decides to actually run it gets to decide how we decide it. So yeah, I mean whoever right. wants to put the work makes that decision. Yeah. I mean uh, obviously the. Uh, some people should actually say beforehand that they will accept the decision and uh, the voting would have to be probably so, so reasonable that they will happily do that, but in the end, the technical deta details are up to the organizer of the contest, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, um, I will happily implement the results, but uh, I'm not a designer and don't want to have to anything to do with that before <laughs> it is decided. Mm. Right, um, so I think the topic is uh, through some other topic related to any websites or stuff like that that you want to discuss, we have time. <laughs> but we don't need to use it uh, if we just sit around. So. Okay, uh, another one. Uh, not very related to web services. Uh, I, I apologize about this. Um, it's about, uh, it's very close to the idea of Frank, of Having, making it easier to switch from one page. Uh, I mean, if you're on the package for the page for the package dash, it should be easy to move to the bug ready to dash and, and so on. And um, I was thinking um, it should be not very difficult uh, that the header of all websites uh, that, for instance, uh, are um, connected to the package to the binary package, have links to the two other or three other websites related to the website, to the binary package. So for instance, package debian.org, QA debian.org, uh, bugs debian.org. So the idea and is generally the exist to move the existing links that are between all these pages 
to one place that's identical for each page so that you can just click to. It looks similar and maybe add some, if some are missing, uh, I'm not sure, I haven't analyzed this very closely, but. Same for source package, so same for uh, maintainer of the package, and same for uh, submitters, doesn't matter. No, no I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, so just submit a patch against each of these uh, sites and we will happily apply it. Okay, then I think we're done for now. And I will create the LH project um, for the web services stuff and then we can talk some more after that conf. Uh, right, then thank you all for coming <coughs> and let's get on with that conf.